In this tutorial series, I will show you the complete workflow of modeling, texturing, and animating this microphone. We're gonna create this in a completely professional manner, as we would for a client which is paying us for our product visualization services. And if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques which you're gonna see me use in this video, I put all of this in my ebook, so check that out, the link is below the video. The best kind of reference that you can ever have when you're creating something in 3D is the real product in your hand in real life. Now this time I do have this product right here with me. As you can see I'm speaking into this microphone right now. But most of the time this will probably not be the case for you. If you're working with a very serious client you might get them to send you the product so you can have it on your table as you're working. But since this is not going to be the case most of the time, here's what you can do instead. You're going to go to Google and you're going to type in the name of the product which you're creating. In this case we're creating the Shure SM57 microphone. All you have to do is type that in, go to images, and you're going to have all the pictures that you're ever going to need for this project. Now there are two ways that you can use references as you're working in Blender. You're going to need to have a picture which you can put in the background of your scene, which you can trace with your geometry so that you can get the proportions right, you can get the width and the length correctly, and that's the only way that you can make the model look completely realistic. In this case, for that purpose, all we have to do is just get a simple side view image of this microphone. This is a great example right here and this is also a pretty high resolution image so I'm going to go right click save image as and on my computer I made a new folder where I'm going to save any images that I'm going to use in this particular project this is where I'm going to save reference images any textures that I'm going to need everything is going to be in one place now before we open up this image in blender we're going to have to get some more reference images which are going to sit on our screen at all times and which are going to show the product from various different angles and this is going to give us a better idea of the curves the little details all over this object and and anything else that we might not be able to see in just our background image. So here's a great way to organize this as you're working in Blender. You're going to go to Google and type in Pure Ref and you're going to find this website called pureref.com. We already have the download link right here. We're just going to click on that and here we can download a little program which is very convenient for reference images as you're working. I'm using Windows but if you're using Mac OS you can just select that, hit download right here and do whatever you got to do to install this program. It's pretty straightforward. It's the same as anything else. Once you've installed this program you can find it on your computer it's called pure ref click on that and you're going to get this little dark gray canvas which you can now use for your references before we add any images we're going to right click open up the mode menu and make sure to check always on top otherwise as soon as you click on another program the canvas is going to disappear into the background and then of course we won't be able to see our references and we need to see our references otherwise we can't do this once we check always on top now we can go back to google and we can find some more pictures of this microphone here's a good example right here now we can just right click copy image and we can use right click and paste or control v to paste this into pure ref i'm gonna get some more pictures of some other angles copy and paste into pure ref we could do with some more close-ups of the microphone like this and just try to get as many good pictures as possible the more the better over here we can also see the underside where you plug the cable and once you have a couple of images in pure ref you can just go into blender and this is going to stay on top of your screen at all times you can zoom in you can use the middle click to pan your view and you can make this window a little bit smaller if it bothers you if it's too big i usually like to throw this on my second monitor but if you don't have a second monitor you can always put this little window over the outliner up here in the corner most of the time you're not going to need the outliner anyway so if you place your reference images right here you can always look at them and they're not going to bother you as you're working if you don't want to do all this fancy pure ref stuff or if you don't want to take your own pictures and if you do have a second monitor you can just keep your image browser open on your second monitor and you can open up different images as you're going that's going to work as well now that we got some reference images that we can look at let's load up the background image to do that, we're going to press 7 to go to top view in Blender. We have to make sure that our 3D cursor is exactly in the center of the world. And we can do that with Shift S, cursor to world origin. And now with Shift A, the same way that we add a cube or a circle or a cylinder, we can go down here to image, reference, find the folder where you saved this background image. Then click on the image, click on load reference image, and now you're going to have this in the background. I'm also going to use G and Z to move this down on the Z axis. That way it's going to be behind the scene and it's not going to clip through my model as I'm working. Working. If you want to, you can make this bigger. You can also try to align it a little bit differently if you want to. For example, you can make it sit on top of the x-axis. This might be a little bit easier to work with since now the bottom of this microphone is going to be at the center of the world. And that way we can just keep things a little bit more organized. Now that we got all the reference images ready, let's start creating the model. 
this microphone has a cylindrical shape. So we're going to take this default cube, we're going to press X and then click delete. Now with shift S, you're going to snap your cursor to the world origin by clicking on this button right here. That way we're making sure that when we create this cylinder, we're creating it exactly in the middle of the world, which means it's going to be perfectly aligned with the reference. If our 3D cursor is placed over here, then when we add the new cylinder with shift A, it's going to be created at the 3D cursor right here. And then we would have to manually place it over here. And it's unlikely that we're going to be able to align it very precisely if we do it by hand. So we're better off just pressing shift S, clicking on cursor to world origin. And now when we use shift A to add a new cylinder, it's going to be created exactly in the middle of the world. And it's going to be perfectly aligned with the reference image. As soon as you created your cylinder, don't click anything and don't do anything yet. If you clicked away, then you can just press F9 and you're going to get this add cylinder menu. This is where we can change some of the properties of this new cylinder, which we just created. Otherwise, normally, as soon as you add a new object, you're going to get this little menu down here in the bottom left corner. You can just click on that and it's going to expand and now you can control the properties here We can change the radius We can change the depth of the cylinder and we can also change the number of vertices that we have on the cylinder If we have more vertices, it's going to look more smooth and more round and if we have less vertices It's going to look a little bit more blocky now Obviously if we have more vertices it's going to look better But this also makes it a lot harder to work with because we have a lot more geometry And it's going to be a lot harder to make changes on this shape if we have this much geometry So we're going to set the number of vertices to 16 now. We still have a nice round circle but it's still pretty blocky which makes it a lot easier to work with and don't worry we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier on this later to make this smoother and nicer now while we are still in object mode we're going to press r to rotate then x to only rotate around the x-axis and we're going to type in 90 so that we rotate this cylinder by 90 degrees now we're going to hit enter and now when we go back to top view with seven now this cylinder is going to be aligned with the microphone and the reference image now we're going to press tab to go to edit mode and in edit mode we can edit the geometry of this object so we're going to select everything with a then press s to scale and we're going to scale down this cylinder until it matches the width of the microphone and the reference image if you want to do this more precisely you might want to zoom in on this a little bit and you can also go to wireframe mode up here in the top right corner so that you can see through this object as you're scaling it down and then you can make sure that you're perfectly aligning it with the reference image i think the default shortcut for wireframe view is shift z but i changed my shortcut to just z because that makes it a lot quicker and easier i use this all the time and i don't want to have to work with menus or anything i just want wireframe mode as soon as i press z you can change that by going to edit preferences key map click on name right here and now search for shading and there is this option called toggle shading type you can click right here and press z and now when you close this when you press z you're just going to switch to wireframe mode instantly anyway we're going to scale this down so that it aligns with the microphone and with Control R, we're going to add a new loop cut right here. So click once to cut the geometry and then right click to confirm this action and place this exactly in the middle of the cylinder. Now we're going to press number three to go to face select mode. Select this face with right click or left click, whatever your click button is. Press X, delete vertices. Now go back to vertex select mode right here. Or you can also press one to go back to vertex select mode. And with Alt right click, we're going to select this entire edge loop back here. Press F to fill that. And now we cut the bottom half of the cylinder. So now it's perfectly aligned with the bottom of the reference image we're going to right click somewhere to the side to deselect everything then press b to get the box select tool and we can click and drag now to create a box and when we release everything inside this box is going to be selected make sure that you're doing this in wireframe view because if you're not in wireframe mode and you select with the box you're not going to select the geometry on the other side of the object which you can't see and if we don't select that background geometry then we're going to create a big mess out of this shape so we have to make sure that we select everything so go to wireframe and then do the box select let's go back to top view press g to move this and y to only move it along the y axis and then we're going to bring it up here to this cut in the middle of the microphone and at this point we're going to press s to scale and we're going to scale this up until it aligns with this reference image again try to place this exactly in the middle of this little gap right here then press e to extrude and just bring it up here to the top of this next piece on the microphone now before we move on to the top of the microphone we're first going to create these little details around the edges of this microphone that you can see right here using our box select tool we're once again going to select every Everything at the end here zoom in as close as you can while you're still able to see everything then press ctrl b to bevel this and you want to make this bevel just as wide as what you can see in the reference image right here now we don't want to have a round edge here we want this edge to bend inwards a little bit like this so when we create this bevel and we align it with this bottom line here we're going to click and then we're going to get this bevel menu we're going to take this shape slider and slide it all the way down to zero that's going to make a little step on this edge loop and that's almost exactly the shape that we're looking for also make sure
make sure that you have two segments and not any more than that. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the shape that you want here. Once we've done that, we're going to rotate our view so that we can see this from a different angle. And then with Alt right click, we're going to select only this edge loop on the inside of this step. And with double G, we're going to just slide it upwards a little bit like this. And let's check if we got it right from top view. As you can see, now we also got this little angle over here and that looks pretty good. Now we're going to move down here to this little gap. With Alt right click, we're going to select this entire edge loop. And then again with Control B, we're going to bevel it. You can scroll up or down to control how many edges you have here. But I'm going to scroll all the way down so I only have two edge loops. We're going to make this only as wide as the inside of this gap like this. And then just press E to extrude. Right click to snap this back into place. But now we have some extra connected geometry here which we can just scale down with S. And then this face segment is going to move inwards a little bit. From top view, you can check to make sure that you don't push it in too far or too little. Then deselect everything. Use Alt right click to select this edge loop on the outside of this gap and shift alt right click to select the other edge loop with control b we're going to bevel this and again you want to scroll all the way down because you don't want to have any extra geometry here we just want to turn each edge loop into two edge loops and we're going to move our mouse until we get this very close to the bottom but not all the way to the bottom from top view we can get a better look at how wide this is supposed to be i want it to be approximately this wide this might be a little bit too much so i'm going to undo this with control z and i'll repeat the same action but this time i'll make these bevels a little bit smaller smaller like this. That looks a little bit better. Let's move on. Let's go back to top view and at the bottom of this microphone we're going to select this geometry and again we're going to bevel it with control B but this time we're going to scroll up one so that we get two segments like this and in the shape slider in this bevel menu we're not going to use zero anymore. This time we're going to crank that all the way up to one and now we didn't make this edge round. We just added some more geometry around this edge. This is going to be very important later when we use a subdivision surface modifier because this is going to act as supporting geometry for this angle and it's going to make this a little bit sharper. You're going to see what I'm talking about later on. Make sure you don't make this too wide like this. You can use your top view. You can go to top view to check the reference to see how wide this should be. It's supposed to be approximately like this. So we're just going to leave it at that. Now let's move up to the top of the microphone and let's get busy with the fun part. Now before we start working on the top of this microphone, Here's something that we can do to make our workflow a lot easier. Right now, our microphone is lying down on the floor and we have a reference image underneath the scene. So every time we add a new cylinder, we have to rotate it by 90 degrees so that it's aligned properly. But we can change this. And here's how you can change this. With Shift S, we're going to snap the cursor to the world origin. Then we're going to go to this menu up here and set the pivot point to 3D cursor. And now anything that you select is going to rotate around the 3D cursor, which is currently in the middle of the world. Make Make sure that you're in object mode when you do this. Now with A, we're going to select everything, then press R to rotate, X to limit the rotation around the X axis, and then type in 9, 0, and hit enter. Now the microphone is standing up. Now we can just go to front view with one, and every time we add a new object into the scene now, it's already going to be aligned with the background. So now we're going to select the microphone, go to edit mode, press 3 and enter face select mode, select this face at the top of the microphone, then press shift S and snap the cursor to select it, so now we can add a new object exactly on top of the microphone. Let's go back to front view with one and let's go back to object mode. And now with shift A, we're going to add a new cylinder. This time we can use 32 vertices because we're not going to add a subdivision surface modifier to this part. Let's go to edit mode, wireframe view and scale this down so it's a little bit narrower than this top of the microphone here. We're going to try to align it with this little cage that we have in between the crown and the body of the microphone. Now right click to select the face at the top of the cylinder, press G to move it and Z to move it down on the Z axis and we're going to align it with the top of the cage and once we do that we can take the bottom face G to move it Z to move it along the Z axis and lift it up to this corner here where the cage starts to go inwards at the bottom now press E to extrude then right click to snap this back to its original place and since the 3d cursor is still exactly on top of this microphone and the pivot point is still set to 3d cursor now we can press S to scale Z to only scale on the Z axis and then press 0 and that way this face is going to be perfectly aligned with the top of the body of the microphone. Now we're just going to scale this down with S a little bit, and now we can move up to the crown. Now when we're creating the crown, we have to be very careful with how many vertices we're using on the cylinder which we're going to create here, because there are exactly 24 bars on this crown, but that means there are also 24 holes, which means at the very least we have to have one edge here, which means this is going to be an edge, and this is going to have to be a separate edge. I can use my pencil tool over here to try to explain to you how this is going to work. There is going to be a vertex right here, another vertex right here, and 
edge connecting those two vertices and then there's going to be an edge going down like this and another one over here on the other side there are going to be some more vertices like this and all of that's going to be connected with another edge and there are going to be some more edges at the bottom here but the problem is that now the face that is going to be created in between these two segments is going to be a lot wider than these two faces on the sides and this is going to give us some shading problems because this inconsistency is going to be visible and the shape at the bottom won't be a perfect circle so we're gonna have to add another edge right here and that way we're going to have four faces which all have an equal width so the bar is going to be one edge and the gap is going to be two edges so since we have 24 of these bars and we have one edge here and two edges here that means we have to multiply three edges by 24 sections and that's going to give us 72 edges so we're going to place the 3d cursor at the top of this face right here with shift s cursor to selected now go back to object mode press shift a add a new circle right here and set the number of vertices to 72 now in edit mode we're going to go to vertex select mode scale this down and this has to be just a little bit bigger than the top of this cage we're going to fill that with f press e to extrude it up and then confirm the action right here let's set the pivot point back to median point that way this is no longer going to be scaling away from the 3d cursor but from the middle of this circle if we have this on 3d cursor then when we scale this it's also going to move upwards a little bit and we don't want that so instead we're just going to use median point scale this up a little bit and now press e to extrude it up to here somewhere confirm again and now we got up to the crown now the crown is also just a little bit wider than this base down here so again we're going to press e to extrude right click to snap this back into its original place then press s to scale and hold down shift so that we can only scale this a little bit and then again extrude this up and we want to bring this down to the bottom of these gaps between the bars now we're going to select this face at the top here and you can do that either by going to face select mode and selecting this surface or by going to vertex select mode and using alt right click to select this entire perimeter now with i we're going to inset this surface like this i want to bring it in approximately this far and now we have a new face loop over here around this circle and we need to select every third face in this circle now we don't have to do that manually there's a quicker way to do this with alt right click we're going to select this entire loop make sure that you're in face select mode then go up here to select check or deselect now we deselected every other face but for every one selected face we need to have two deselected faces so we're going to type in two deselected and one selected right now we have a little bit of inconsistency and to fix that we just have to adjust the offset a little bit in this case we have to adjust the value by two and now we have exactly the right faces selected so we can go back to front view press e to extrude this up and bring it up to the top of the crown like this and now we can continue working on this shape at the top of the crown so first of all if you look very closely you can see that at the top these bars start to go inwards and here's how we can create that right now we have all the faces at the top selected if you don't have that selected make sure you're in face select mode then just use the box select tool to select everything like this and now they're all selected we're going to go to vertex select mode so that now we're selecting individual vertices then go to top view with seven and we're going to use our brush select tool to deselect some of the vertices on the outside so press c to activate the brush select tool you can scroll down to increase the size or scroll up to decrease the size of the brush and if you click and drag you're going to select new geometry or if you middle click and drag you're going to deselect geometry with this brush so we're going to deselect all the geometry on the outside of this selected area make sure that you got everything and now we're going to move these vertices down by pressing g and pressing z to move this along the z-axis we're just gonna move them down a little bit like this and now we still have to make this circle on the inside of this crown here's a very easy way to create this ring here we're going to go to front view with one then in edit mode we're going to press k to activate the knife tool and i can see from this reference image that the bottom of this ring is somewhere around here so we're going to follow that line until around here somewhere and now we can just click right here to create a new cut press x to limit this cut to the x-axis and then press c so that we cut all the way through this object now we're going to click over here on the other side of the microphone hit enter and now we got new geometry but i just realized that there's something else we have to do so let's press ctrl z to undo this and with the box select tool we're going to select all the geometry at the top and with s we're going to scale it down because these faces have to be angled as you can see right here in the reference image once we got that out of the way now we can deselect everything give me the knife tool again click here press x press c to cut through and click on the other side and hit enter now with ctrl b we're going to bevel this to turn this segment into two segments make sure you don't have any more than that if you do then just scroll down before confirming this now click to confirm deselect everything use the box select tool to select the top segment and again make sure that you're doing this in wireframe mode so you can also select what you can't see 
Then with double G, we're going to slide this up almost until the top, but not all the way up. Something like this will do it. Then in wireframe view, we're going to select the next segment with the box select tool. And we're going to bring that up to the bottom of the ring, as you can see right here. Once we got all that, with control R, we're going to add a new loop cut like this. Click to create it, and then slide it outward slightly like this, and confirm it around here somewhere. Now we're going to approach two of these bars, or rather the gap between the two bars. Go to face select mode, select this face here, and and shift select this face here then press x delete faces and now we're going to have to fill this to do that we can just go to edge select mode select this edge and this edge on the other side press f to fill and now we have a face there we're also going to do that with these bottom two edges and all the other edge pairs which we have around these holes once we have one little segment like this in face select mode we're going to snap the 3d cursor to the middle of this circle at the bottom right here then alt right click to select this little section here go to top view with seven and we're just going to copy this and arrange it in a circle so it fits perfectly between each pair of bars to do that press alt e click on spin the number of steps has to be 24 because we need 24 copies and we're going to check use duplicates right here now you can see everything is connected but at the beginning here we have a double section so whatever is selected we can just take that and delete it with x and now everything is perfectly connected we just made a big mistake because we did not delete the faces on all the other bars. So we're going to have to undo this again with Control Z. And instead of copying just this bridge, we can instead delete all the other bars and copy these two bars which are correct here. Or rather, we can just copy one and the bridge and we're going to be fine. So use Alt right click to select this segment at the bottom. Then use Shift Alt right click to select this. And with our box select tool or our brush select tool, we can select some of the other faces here. Also on this side and in the front as well. While in face select mode we're also going to align our view with this floor right here then with the box select tool we're going to select everything underneath the crown like this make sure that you also select the floor and now with control i we're going to invert the selection and we're going to delete all the other faces then select this face right here press x delete face and now we just have to copy this bar and the bridge and arrange it in a circle and it's going to connect perfectly and that's how we're going to fix everything so alt right click to select this segment in wireframe we're going to use the box select tool to select the top Make sure that the 3D cursor is at the middle of this circle. And then again, go to top view, press Alt E, spin, use duplicates, 24 steps. Once again, we have a double here at the beginning. So we're just going to delete that. Now everything is going to be perfectly connected. And now the crown is going to be ready. Now that the crown is complete, we're going to do a quick break. Go catch your breath, go get some more coffee. And then we're going to continue with some more details on this microphone. To create the mesh at the top of the microphone, we're first going to select this circle at the bottom of the crown, press Shift S, cursor to select it, and now in object mode, we're going to add a new circle, and we're going to give that circle 16 vertices. In edit mode, scale this circle down, and in object mode, we're going to lift it up to around here somewhere. Now go back to edit mode, and instead of just filling this, we're going to select everything, and go up here to face, grid fill. This is going to fill our circle with tiles, and each tile has four edges around it. This is a lot better for our topology and you're going to see why when we add a subdivision surface modifier. Then we're going to scale this down and this surface which we just created right here is going to be the bottom of this mesh on the inside. So we want to take the outer edges and we're going to use them to create the outside of this mesh. To do this, select everything in edge select mode, go up here to select, select loops and check boundary loop. Now we only have the outer edge selected, we're going to press E to extrude, right click to snap this back into place, then scale this up and you you want to bring it out to the edge of this crown on the inside now of course we still have to lift this up a little bit more now extrude right click again g to move it and z to move it down on the z-axis like this now to get the right shape here we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier the subdivision surface modifier is going to make this blocky shape very smooth and round to do that we're going to go over here to the properties tab find the modifier properties menu click here to add a modifier go to generate and click on subdivision surface as you can see now this becomes a lot more round and now we're just going to adjust this shape a little bit so it looks more like what we're seeing in the reference image right here to do that we're going to go to face select mode select this face in the corner then hold Control shift and select this opposite face on the other side and everything on the inside of this surface is going to be selected scale this down a little bit and with G and Z we're going to move this inwards like this let's set the subdivision level to 2 so this becomes even smoother and more detailed and now we can add another loop cut here with Control 
control R, we can lift that up a little bit. And let's select this surface again in face select mode and lift it up a little bit as well. So it's not so sharp and it's not so deep. And try to play around with this geometry a little bit until you get the right shape here. Now, if instead of this surface over here, we had an end gone, which is just a face which has a bunch of edges around it, like a circle, if we fill it with F, then we would get this weird pattern on the inside. And that's not really what we want. This can also give us problems with our workflow. Now, this is an issue of topology. So this is a totally different story, which we're not going to talk much about today. But just keep in mind that in this case, instead of using a circle, it's better to take this edge loop and just use a grid fill. That's going to keep everything a lot more organized. We're going to go up here to object, shade smooth. And now we have a good shape for this mesh on top of the microphone. From side view, we're going to select all the geometry from the top and lift it up a little bit more on the Z axis, just so that it matches the reference image correctly. And on the inside of this microphone, we're once again going to select this face, snap the cursor right here and add a new cylinder. We're going to delete the faces at the top and the bottom of this cylinder, then scale it down. And that has to be on the inside of this ring, just so that we don't have a hole here, which we can see through. Something like this will be good enough. Now that we completed the microphone and the crown, let's make this look a little bit better using subdivision surface modifiers. Now that this model is more or less finished, let's start adding some subdivision surface modifiers to make this look a little bit better. First, we're going to select this object, which makes the body of the microphone. Once again, go to add modifier, generate subdivision surface. Alternatively, you can also select this object and press control one or control two or control three even. And this is going to make your microphone a lot smoother. But when you go to edit mode, you can still see the simple geometry before the subdivision. And that makes it very easy to continue working with this object if we have to. It just looks a little bit nicer in object mode at the moment. Now, if you're not familiar with how the subdivision surface modifier works, let me create a simple example just to make you understand this a little bit better. I'm going to add a new cube. And then with control three, I'm going to apply a subdivision surface modifier to this cube. As you can see, now it turns into a sphere. But if I go to edit mode, and if with control R, I add a new loop cut, which I place right here, you can see that the shape changes drastically. And if I bring this loop cut close to the edge right here, this edge becomes a lot sharper. And I can do the same thing with more loop cuts, which I can add to any corner or any face of this cube. Adding loop cuts like this and bringing them close to the edges is what we call adding supporting geometry. And this limits the curve which is created on these edges by the subdivision surface modifier, because now this is bent only between these edges, which we brought here close to this corner. If we push these further apart with double G, the curve, as you can see, is still in between those edges. But now the edges are further apart. So the curve is bigger. But we only want to use the subdivision surface modifier to make the edges look a little bit more round. So we're going to bring the edge loops quite close to the edges. And as you can see, this looks a little bit more realistic and natural. Delete this cube, select the body of the microphone and press tab to go to edit mode. And with control R, we're going to add a new loop cut right here. And as you can see, that tightens up this geometry right here, and it makes it look a little bit nicer. Now in this case, we want to tighten up this also from this side on the inside. And we're also going to need some more geometry this way. But there's a much easier way to do this. And it's also going to be a lot more organized if we do it this second way. So undo these loop cuts with control Z. And we're going to select all these edge loops, which we want to sharpen a little bit with some supporting geometry. And remember how we created the bevel down here at the bottom of the microphone, we're going to do the same thing up here at the top. Because as you can see, this bevel makes this bottom look a lot sharper. If we didn't have this geometry down here, this would be rounded and subdivided and it would look very strange. So we had to add a bevel down here at the bottom. And for the same reason, we're going to select these edge loops over here at the top with control B, we're going to add Add a small bevel like this to each edge loop. Make sure that the shape value is 1.000 and set the number of segments to two. Then we're also going to make a loop cut here and bring it down here close to this gap. Make sure you don't bring it all the way in here. You just want to have it close to this edge loop. And we're also going to make another one down here from the bottom. We're also going to add a loop cut to the middle of this microphone. And we're going to scale that down a little bit. Because if we look at this microphone from front view, you can see that the body is a little bit curved and adding this loop cut and scaling it down gives us this shape. Now select this body, go up here to object in object mode and click on shade smooth. Now this looks more complete. We're going to select the crown and in edit mode, we're first going to delete this face on the inside. Now we're going to try to add a subdivision surface modifier to the crown. And before we do that, I noticed that we have some gaps here caused by the spin tool, which we used earlier. We duplicated one of the segments and arranged it in a circle, but we didn't connect that new geometry with the geometry which we had here before. And as a result, now we have disconnected geometry here. And in some places, is we have two vertices in the exact same place. To do this, select everything, press M, click on merge by distance. And now all the vertices which are exactly in the same place are going to be connected and turned into one vertex. Now we don't have this disconnection problem anymore. And now we can add a subdivision surface modifier. Before we do that, let's
select this crown and object mode. Press G, then Z, and hold down control when you move this up so that we snap it up by exactly one meter. Now press the full stop on the number pad to focus on this object. And let me show you why N-Gons, or faces which have a lot of edges around them, are bad. When we add a subdivision surface modifier to this object, because of this N-Gon in the middle, we have a very strange result and this is not what we're looking for. So undo the subdivision, delete this face, or better yet, inset the face with I and then delete the face on the inside. And we're also going to inset the face at the bottom here and delete that as well. Now we can add a subdivision surface modifier, but we still have to add some supporting geometry to make this a little bit tighter. So to add this supporting geometry, it's going to be easier if we just use loop cuts. So let's add a loop cut around here and push it out to the outside. Add another loop cut on the inside and also another one on the middle so that we can tighten up the outside of this ring. Now we're also going to add one over here and bring it up and another one down here and bring that down. And now to tighten up this bridge on the inside, I don't want to just add loop cuts, but I want to select these edges at the beginning and the end of the bridge. And with control B, I want to bevel them. But if we bevel these edges, then the back side or the inside of this ring is going to become very strange. I don't want this to look like this and this might give us some problems. So instead it's probably a better idea to just select this surface, inset it with I to get some edges close to the outside and then with Control R we can just add some loop cuts in the back to make this look a little bit nicer if we have to. But we have to do this on all the bridges simultaneously. So use Alt right click to select one of the face loops like this, press Shift G, select similar area and now Blender is going to select all the faces which have a similar area. Right now it has too much tolerance but we can reduce that tolerance by going down here to the select similar menu and setting the threshold value to something like 0 0.0001 or maybe we still gotta add a couple more zeros in this case using five zeros worked pretty well for me and as you can see now we have every bridge selected and nothing else now with i we're going to inset and that kind of tightens up every single bridge individually then we're going to go to front view deselect everything press z to go to wireframe view give me the knife tool with k click right here press x to limit this cut to the x-axis and C to cut all the way through. Click on the other side and hit enter. Now select all these new vertices which we just created and with double G we're going to slide them down to the bottom like this. And I'm also going to add a new loop cut around the outside and bring it up here. We're going to select one of the surfaces at the top of one of the bars and with shift G we're going to once again select all the spaces with a similar area. Press I to inset. But before you confirm this press O and now you're going to add a loop cut around each of the selected areas which kind of tightens up the geometry at the top of each bar. Now that looks a lot better, but we still have to tighten up some of the edge loops around here. These two are very close together, so we have to add very tiny bevels to make this look better. Select them and with Control B, just add a bevel. That looks better. And we're also going to select these two edge loops at the bottom here, and with Control B, bevel them as well. Now in Object Mode, go up here to Object, Shade Smooth, then press G to move this object, Z to limit the movement to the Z axis, and hold Control to move this down by exactly one meter. Now that the upper part of the microphone is finished, there's one one more thing that we have to create here. I have a picture of the bottom of the microphone where you connect the cable. I know a lot of you are very curious to see how this can be created. So let me show you. We're going to move down to the bottom of the microphone, go to edit mode, select this face. And again with delete on the number pad or the full stop on the number pad, we're going to focus on this face. We just have to press I to inset, then press O to move it inwards. We're going to bring it in about this far. Now press E to extrude this inwards. And it has to go approximately this far as you can see in Y frame right here. While this face is still selected, go to edge select mode, also add this edge loop to the selection with shift alt right click and with control B we're going to bevel both of these to sharpen them a little bit. But there's one more thing that we have to do before we can bevel this so let's undo that with control Z and let's get rid of the subdivision surface modifier for now. Right here on the side of this hole we have this little dent or this little gap. Here's how you create that. First of all to make this easier we're going to delete this face at the bottom of the hole and now we can select these four faces and with I we're going to inset them. You might still have your outset turned on from the action which we did before at the top of the crown. So you can just uncheck that over here in this little menu. Or alternatively, before you confirm the action, you can just press O and now this is going to move inwards. We're going to bring it in about this far and also uncheck the boundary box so that we don't get a face segment right up here at the top of this selection. Go to vertex select mode, select this vertex, press shift S, cursor to selected. Now set the pivot point to 3D cursor, select these vertices on the sides here and with S, we're going to scale them towards the 3D cursor like this. We can also place the 3D cursor between these two vertices and then select these three, press S to scale them and just push them outwards a little bit like this. And if you want to go even further, you can select this one and with double G slide it outwards a little bit more. And now we have a little round cutoff here. Place the 3D cursor at the vertex on the inside
side of this hole right here with shift s cursor to select it then select all the vertices at the bottom here press e to extrude right click to snap this back then s to scale z to only scale down on the z axis and then press zero and now this is going to be aligned with the top geometry right here now we were messing around with the geometry at the bottom so this is not perfectly aligned to connect these vertices you can either place a 3d cursor here then snap this one to the other vertex with the 3d cursor and do the same thing on the other side as well or you can just select all the vertices up here and delete them with x then take these edges at the bottom extrude right click and lift them up select these two edges fill them with f create a loop cut right here in vertex select mode select this vertex press shift s cursor to select it then select this one shift s selection the cursor now we fill this hole with two quads quads is what we call faces which have four edges around them we didn't merge these vertices together yet so we can select them both press m merge by distance and now we can select this entire edge loop here and in this case if we use a grid fill it's not going to fill properly because we don't have an even amount of geometry so maybe we can just snap the cursor to the middle of this hole with shift s then extrude right click scale down fill this with an end on and we're going to add some bevels here to prevent some weird twisting once we add the subdivision surface modifier back now select this edge loop select these edges around this little gap here also on the bottom of the hole here and we're also going to select these edges on the outside of the hole now with Control b we're going to add a bevel to make this flow a little bit better we're going to uncheck loop slide in this menu and now on the inside here we have some weird faces at the bottom of this hole but we can correct this by going here to the bevel menu find where it says miter outer or miter outer i'm not sure how you pronounce this change that from sharp to arc and now this geometry is arranged a little bit differently go back to vertex select mode select this vertex shift select this vertex press j to make a new edge between them and do the same thing over here on the other side now we can add our subdivision surface modifier back and as you can see this looks perfect we're also gonna have to add these little pins here and to do that we're going to snap the 3d cursor to the world origin which is right here in the middle shift a add a new cube scale this cube down in edit mode now first add a sub subdivision surface modifier with two subdivision levels find this arrow and apply the subdivision surface modifier then add another modifier from the deform section this one is called cast we have to set the factor value to one and once again apply that modifier now we have a perfect sphere which is made of only squares with our box select tool we're going to select the geometry at the top of the sphere delete all that geometry now select this edge loop here extrude right click lift that up on the z-axis and in edit mode we're going to move that to the side like this now we can go to top view alt e spin use duplicates and we only want three steps in this situation once again we got a double here so we can just delete that and of course these are a little bit too big so we can scale them down and lift them up to push them inwards a little bit more now we can just go to object shade smooth and we also have the pins here at the bottom of this hole now there are some more details on this hole but this is going to be invisible anyway because we're going to plug a cable in here so i don't want to spend any more time modeling this i just wanted to show you a couple more exercises in this hole here but now the microphone model is finished and now it's time to move on to another part as you can see we still have to create a cable here in the back and we also have to make the stand but that's going to be a little bit too much content for this episode so we're gonna save that for the next one if you follow this tutorial so far i want to see how your microphone turned out so join my discord community the link is below you can post your artworks in the general chat and you can also get some feedback from the community and you might also get roasted make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you can see the next episode episodes and if you haven't already then like the video let me know in the comments if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next episode